Good day, learners. It's me again, Sir AJ. Are you eager to know something today? If your answer is yes, then this video is for you. This video will be a continuation of accounting for property, plant, and equipment. In this video, we will talk about the subsequent measurement of property, plant, and equipment. So if you're interested to know how to subsequently measure PPE items, this video is for you. So this is the part two of accounting for property, plant, and equipment. In this video, we will focus on the subsequent measurement of PPE items. So how do we subsequently measure property, plant, and equipment? As I mentioned in the last video, for subsequent measurement, you have two models to use. Either you use the cost model or you use the revaluation model. Take note that when you choose a model, you should consistently use this model for each class of property, plant, and equipment. Take note, it's a class. So for example, for land, you use the revaluation model. It is okay that for the class of machinery, you can use the cost model as long as you consistently apply that model to that whole class of PPE. So in the cost model, PPE are measured at cost less any accumulated depreciation and any impairment losses. While in the revaluation model, it is measured at the revalued amount, which is the fair value at the date of revaluation less any subsequent accumulated depreciation and any subsequent impairment losses. So from these two models, there are three concepts that we need to understand. First is the depreciation. Second is revaluation. And third, impairment. In this video, we will be focusing on depreciation. Revaluation and impairment will be discussed in the subsequent videos. So what are the general concepts of depreciation? First, it is defined as the periodic adjustment of carrying amount of fixed assets due to the passage of time and or their continuous use. So as long as you use your asset, there is depreciation or if due to passage of time. Every time you record depreciation, you debit depreciation expense and you credit a contra-asset account called accumulated depreciation. Take note that the depreciation expense is recognized in profit or loss, except when that depreciation expense is capitalizable in the carrying amount of another asset. For example, um, the depreciation expense of a machinery used in the production of your goods is capitalizable as part of your inventory and not recognized in profit or loss. Other than that, all depreciation will be recognized in profit or loss. Depreciation begins when it is already available for use. So anong ibig sabihin ng available for use? Ang ibig sabihin is when it is already in the location and condition intended by management. So it doesn't mean na hindi mo pa siya ginagamit ay hindi ka pa magde-depreciate. As long as it is already available for use, depreciation will start. And depreciation will end at the earlier of the date the asset is classified as held for sale and the date the asset is derecognized. So, depende kung when you classify it as held for sale, which we will talk about in the future, it is already, depreciation already ends. Or when you already derecognize the asset, depreciation also ceases. Let's first discuss some concepts and definitions in depreciation. First, we will discuss the depreciable amount, how much will be depreciated, and the depreciable period or how long will the depreciation last. So the depreciable amount of an asset shall be allocated on a systematic basis over its useful life. 
the depreciable amount or the depreciable cost is the initial cost which was discussed in part one video less the residual of value. What is the residual value? The residual value is the amount of the asset at the end of its life. Take note that the residual value and the useful life of an asset shall be reviewed at least each financial year end and if expectations differ from previous estimates, then the changes shall be accounted for as a change in accounting estimate, which we will talk about later. Now we talk about the depreciation method. The depreciation method used shall reflect, take note, the pattern in which the asset's future economic benefits are expected to be consumed by the entity. There are various methods, and the method shall be reviewed at least each financial year end also. And if there are changes, then the change shall be accounted for as a change in accounting estimate. So what are the different methods? First method is the straight line method. This is the most common depreciation method where annual depreciation is equal throughout the useful life of the asset. This is a depreciation which is a function of time instead of usage. And the formula is just the depreciable cost divided by the useful life of the asset. So for example, let us assume an asset is acquired for 2,200,000 pesos with a residual value of 400,000 pesos at the end of its five-year useful life. And it is expected to produce 100,000 units of output as follows. In year one, 15,000. In year two, 20,000. In year three, 30,000 in year 4, 25,000, and in year 5, 10,000. Using the straight line method, the depreciation is computed as follows. Initial cost, 2,200,000, less the residual value of 400,000. The depreciable cost is 1,800,000. Divided by the useful life of five years, the annual depreciation is 360,000, meaning, for every year in the five-year useful life, the depreciation is just the same, equal to 360,000 pesos. So that's straight line method. The second method is the usage or output method. In this method, we use the production or the units of output. That means that the depreciation is a function of usage rather than time. And the formula is just the depreciable cost multiplied by the units of production this period divided by the total production throughout the life of the asset. So using the same example, take note that the total expected production is 100,000 units. And there is an expectation of how many units to produce every year. So to compute for depreciation, Using the output method, for year one, the depreciable cost is 1,800,000, that's 1 1.8 million, times ilan yung na produce during the year, which is 15,000, divided by the total, which is 100,000. So the depreciation for year one is 270,000 pesos. For year two, that's 1.8 million times 20,000, divided by 100,000, 300. 60,000. If you observe, mas malaki yung depreciation sa year 2 because mas marami ding output ang naproduce. For year 3, that's 1.8 million times 30,000 divided by 100,000. That's a total of 540,000 pesos. For year 4, that's 1.8 million times 25,000 divided by 100,000 pesos. That would be 450,000 pesos. And in year 5, that's 1.8 million times 10,000 divided by 100,000 is equal to 180,000 pesos depreciation. So that's the depreciation for the output method. So what is the third method? 
The third method is the sum of the years digit method or the SYD method. In this method, higher depreciation charges in the first years of the asset's useful life. Meaning, habang tumatagal, mas kumukonti yung depreciation. So, you use this method, for example, when your asset is expected to be used more in the earlier life ng asset. So, for example, siguro mga computer or yung mga photocopying machine, no? they are expected to be more useful in the earlier years. The formula is the depreciable cost multiplied by the remaining useful life during the year divided by the sum of all the years. So, how do we do that? Taking the same example, if its useful life is 5 years, then the sum of the years is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 or equals to 15. Yan yung gagamitin nating denominator every year. For year 1, the depreciation is 1.8 million times 5. Bucket 5? Because as of year 1, 5 years pa yung remaining life. So that's 5 over 15. Total of 600,000 pesos. For year 2, that's 1.8 million times 4 over 15. That's 480,000 pesos. For year 3, that's 1.8 million times 3 over 15. Total of 360,000 pesos. For year 4, that's 1.8 million times 2 over 15. That's 240,000 pesos. And for year 5, that's 1.8 million times 1 over 15. The depreciation is 120,000 pesos. If you add all depreciation expense for 5 years, the total will still be 1,800,000. And if you take note, from year 1 to year 5, declining yung depreciation. So, mas malaki yung depreciation during the earlier years. So, that's for SYD or some of the years digit method. The fourth method is the declining balance method. Just like some of the years digit, higher depreciation charges in the first years of the asset's useful life. And you use this method if your asset is used more during its earlier life. There is a difference in the formula now. The formula for the declining balance method is carrying amount beginning Carrying amount meaning the initial cost minus accumulated depreciation. So we deduct yung mga depreciation in the past years times the depreciation rate. What is the depreciation rate? The depreciation rate is equal to the declining rate. So pipili ka ng declining rate. Kapag pinili mo double declining, the declining rate is 200%. Meron din namang pumipili ng 150% declining balance. So, ang declining rate mo, 150% divided by useful life. So, for example, we use double declining. So, same example, if we use double declining, the depreciation rate is 200% divided by 5 years. The depreciation rate every year is 40%. So, for year 1, the depreciation is 2.2 million times 40%. That's 880,000. Please take note that we use 2.2 million and not 1.8 million because for declining balance method, we initially ignore residual value. Kailan lang natin i-consider ang residual value? I-consider lang natin yung residual value at the last year of its useful life. So that's 2.2 million times 40% is equal to 880,000 pesos. For year 2, that's 1.32 million. Paano na compute yung 1.32 million, sir? Take note that we use the carrying amount. So if the initial cost is 2.2 million, tapos nagkaroon ka na ng depreciation expense last year of 880,000, that's, that means your accumulated depreciation is 880,000. So 2.2 million minus 880,000, that's 1.32 million, yung carrying amount niya. Times 40%, that's 528,000. 
for year 3, ang carrying amount na lang ay 792,000. That's 1.32 million minus yung depreciation of for year 2 which is 528,000. So ang natira na lang na carrying amount ay 792,000. Times 40%, ang depreciation for year 3 is 316,800. Following sa year 4, if you will observe, Kapag ima-minus mo yung 316,800, so 792 minus 316,800, ang matitira na lang na carrying amount ay 475,200. If you multiply that by 40%, medyo malaki yun. E ang pwede mo na lang i-depreciate ay 75,200 para 400,000 yung matirang residual value. That means for year 4, hindi na tayo magko-compute ng normal na imumultiply natin ng 40%. We just deduct 400,000. Whatever is the residual, which is 75,200, yun na yung depreciation for year 4. Kasi kailangan matira yung residual value na 400,000. That means for year 5, wala na tayong gagawing depreciation. So that would be for declining balance method. So there are four methods again. There is the straight line. There is the output method. We have the sum of the year's digit method and the declining balance method. So what if may mga changes sa estimates? For example, nagbago ang method or nagbago ang residual value or nagbago ang useful life. So if there are changes in estimates, dahil estimates lang to, companies carefully determine depreciation rates based on past experience with similar assets and other pertinent information. But they are only estimates. Pwede silang mag-change. So companies may need to revise them during the life of the asset. Take note that if there are changes, these are accounted for as change in accounting estimate or prospectively. That means, hindi mo napapalitan yung mga past mong mga depreciation, you will only account for it prospectively. Or yung papalitan mo na lang is the current year depreciation and the future years. So prospective. Let's take an example. So, Luoy Company purchased machinery with an original cost of 90000 It estimates a 20-year life with no residual value. However, during year 11, Luoy estimates that it will use the machine for an additional 20 years. So, after 10 years of using it, naisip mo na or inestimate mo na may additional 20 years pa. So, for a total of 30 years pala yung life niya. How much is the depreciation for year 11? So to compute that, let's first compute the carrying amount of the asset as of year 11. So if we depreciate it for 20 years using the straight line method, so the depreciation every year is 90,000 divided by 20 years, that's 4,500. Since 10 years ka nang nagde-depreciate, that means 10 times na nagdepreciate ng 4,500 for a total accumulated depreciation of 45,000 pesos. So the carrying amount is 45,000 na lang kasi 90,000 yung initial cost minus accumulated depreciation of 45,000. Ang carrying amount for year 11 is 45,000 divided by the remaining useful life as revised. So from now until the future, the, re the remaining life na lang daw is 20 years. So meaning, ang bagong depreciation for year 11 and the next 19 years is 2,250. That's how you do it prospectively. Compute first the carrying amount and then compute the new depreciation. Sir, so what if there are partial depreciation? So companies seldom purchase plant assets on the first day of a fiscal period or dispose them on the last day. Siyempre, ba, mas realistic na binibili mo siya in the middle of the year or dinidispose mo siya in the middle of the year. So if that happens, in computing depreciation expense for partial periods, 
companies must determine the depreciation expense for the full year and then you just prorate this expense between the two periods involved. So for example, ang depreciation mo for the first year and then you purchase it at June. So from June to December, that's seven months. So yung depreciation mo for the first year, i-multiply mo ng 7 over 12. For the second year, yung natirang 5 over 12 nung depreciation for first year, yun yung para sa January to May. And then, yung year to depreciation, i-multiply mo ulit by 7 over 12. So this process should continue throughout the useful life of the asset. You just need to prorate. So there ends our depreciation discussion. For your evaluation and impairment, please watch the subsequent videos. At this time, it's your time naman to test your knowledge. So may dalawa tayong question to test your knowledge. First is theory and then second is problem. Again, if you know the answer, please comment sa video na to yung answer mo. I will reply kung tama yung naging sagot mo or you need to recheck your computation or answer. So for your first question, which of the following statements regarding depreciation is true? A. An asset must be depreciated from the date of its purchase to the date of sale. B. The annual depreciation charge should be constant over the life of the asset. C. The total cost of an asset must eventually be depreciated. Or D. If the carrying amount of an asset is less than the residual value, depreciation is not charged. So comment your answer below. Test your knowledge question number two. On January 1, 2019, Uranus Company purchased an equipment for 1,970,000 pesos. On this date, the equipment has an estimated economic useful life of 12 years, an estimated residual value of 98,000 pesos. It is the company's policy to depreciate this type of equipment using a sum of years digit. On January 1, 2023, Uranus Company made a review of the estimated life and salvage value of the equipment and the review revealed that the asset has a revised useful life of 14 years and a residual value of 100,000. The company also changed the method of depreciation to straight line. What is the carrying value of the asset on December 31, 2024? A. 769,600 B. 789,600 C. 865,800 or D. 875,800 So again, if you know the answer, comment your answer in this video. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for listening and watching this video. If you like this video, please hit like. And if you ka pa nakapag-subscribe, please subscribe to my channel. Please also share sa inyong mga classmates, sa friends, so that sila din, matuto din sila by watching this video. So that would be all for today. And I'll see you again in the next video. Bye!